Welcome to the Community Collective Podcast, a flip-flop agent production in collaboration with the Davison Area Chamber of Commerce. I am your host, Johnny B. Good. Welcome back to another episode of the Community Collective Podcast. This week, I am joined by my partner in crime, and it has been a minute since we've been together, hasn't it, Travis? It really has. It's been odd uh, not having our good back and forth conversation and some good humor with each other. So I am excited to have you join. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Well, given the fact that when this episode airs and you're currently listening to it, this is the conclusion. This is the recap episode for season two. Now, for those of you that haven't been listeners for long or you're just hopping on board the Community Collective, what we do is every six months, basically Q1 and Q2 of 2023 was season one, and now with season two, basically from July 1st on is weekly episodes has been season two. Season two was just filled with so many great interviews, discussions, things like that, that we wanted to take an opportunity to you know, recap and maybe discuss a few things, maybe hear a little bit more from us than some of our guests. And I'm going to play the role of interviewer today. So Travis, I hope you're ready for some hard hitting questions. I've got on uh, my Barbara Walters sweater and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to sweat some bullets here. I got my coffee, my water ready <laughs> just to keep my mouth ready to just talk as much as possible with you. <laughs> That's so. perfect. I am absolutely looking forward to it. So I'm going to lob you a softball here right off the rip, and let's see where we can go from here. Which local local guest or business owner that we interviewed left the biggest impact on you? And how do you think it benefited our community? Wow. that I would say, you know, I was looking over all of my notes from the year and looking over the episodes. And we've had almost 40 episodes. We're just below yeah. it. And looking over it, and I kind of was listening to a few of them again. And that's a, that was a, this is a really tough question. I will say one of the ones that I personally enjoyed the most was with our chamber board members and ambassadors on one side, just because it gave me the chance to really talk to them more and get to know more about them, which was really good. Sure. We see each other at all these events. But sometimes we're also busy talking with everybody and saying organized that you don't really get to know everybody all the time very well. And so I would say those that group was very interesting. And it was nice for me to be able to have that kind of little bit one-on-one -on -one time with them on this podcast. Uh, but probably the one I think that had probably the biggest impact on me was Davison Township Parks and Rec. I will say I've always enjoyed going out there with my family and talking to them. And you talk to the team out there, and you can tell how passionate they are about it. But until you really sit down and talk to them, and when we had Casey on to talk about everything the park's going, you really see their passion for what they're doing. And they aren't just doing it because it's a job. And, it's, and I think that made me appreciate when I go to the Trail of Lights or I go to a pottery class or when kids go to a cooking class. They're doing it because they love it. And that, I think, had a big impact on me because this is something we see every day and you might not always take advantage of something that is in our community, but the, our parks department's everywhere and it's available yeah. for everybody. Yep. And I think that one, uh, they're not a business. They're a, through Davidson Township and they're there for the public to use and the public supports them. Um, but I think that was, that one had the biggest impact on me just because yeah. I've seen how committed they are just to make other people's families happy and create memories. Yeah. No, absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly with that. Uh, as far as Parks and Rec goes, I think the one thing that me personally, how it's benefited the community is that if you have been listening with us weekly on all the different platforms, one thing you'll realize, even going back to the very beginning when we started and really had no clue what we were doing, everyone, regardless of whether we're talking to somebody from uh, the other side of Flint, whether we're talking to somebody in Lapeer, everyone has such a grounded enthusiasm for their community in and of itself. I think there's a collective, not to play off our uh, the name of the pod here, <laughs> but there's a collective yearning for all of our communities to just work together and be collaborative. And we all want to be a part of something and we want to feel when we're in our hometown or when we're in our community, that we're all kind of working towards that same goal. Would you agree with that? I would completely agree. And I think that, I think you hit it right there 
um, out of the park when you said talking to someone in Flint, talking to someone in Lapeer. Yes, we want to promote Davison and show how much we love our community that we're in, but we are we're a growing group and we're a growing community yep. and we're always interacting with so many other people that I think I was excited, not knowing what to expect when we started this podcast, but it's mm -hmm. grown to encompass people from all areas of our region. And I think that part was really fun to discover that, okay, people are listening to this. People are interested in seeing what's going on. And this is, I think originally our hope was one that we would have fun just doing this. But the second sure. one was, this is a way to engage people, our residents, and knowing what's going on in a different kind of way. You no, know, it doesn't always have to be face-to-face. -face. It doesn't have to be an event. Some people can just listen to a podcast as they're working or as they're driving to work. And that's what we hope, that our 20 to 30-minute conversations with people in the area are what people want and are enjoying. Yep, absolutely. So that's a, that's a good transition into my next question for you. Was there a particular episode that sparked oh, maybe an unexpected conversation or initiatives within the community? I think a couple of the episodes that I've really enjoyed are ones that you and I attended a community meeting, uh -huh. such as when doing with public transportation in our area and the community, it was a township board meeting, Davidson township board meeting where several hundred people came to get engaged and get into it. And you and I went to listen. And then yeah. later that night we had a conversation and recorded this. And I think I, really enjoyed that because it was, it was live. It was exciting. And it was just something you and I had not planned. We just said, Hey, we're going to this meeting. And then we need to share this information with everybody. And right. I, to me, that was a way that we were updating the community members who couldn't attend, or maybe someone wanted to hear a perspective. And I will say we were, we're not biased on either side of that issue. We just covered what people were talking about, what the topic was. And I think the other one that really jumped out and it started us a nice, easy going conversation was with state Senator Kevin Daly. Wow. And he was talking about everything that he's involved in and what he's done over his life as a farmer and as an elected official. Um, but then we, at, we jumped out there and you asked a question about some development of property and that just caught on. It was like wildfire everywhere. We were being picked up by radio stations and saying, hey, this small podcast in this community um, got this information. And then it started just kind of catching on and people were listening. I think between the transportation discussion and development side uh, that we had in those, it was just amazing to see that, man, we hit a topic that people wanted to really hear about or people just didn't know what to expect. And so they listened. Yeah. And I think that was a lot of fun. I, I would admit. <laughs> that was a tremendous <laughs> amount of fun. And just to be clear, if we never record another single episode, the simple fact that I can put on my headstone one day that our podcast was able to scoop the Lapeer County Press, I will yes. forever wear that <laughs> as a badge of honor. I thought that was oh amazing. Gosh. Why'd some rinky-dink podcast get the scoop, Senator Daly? And he's all they did was call me. You guys could have called me as well. Guess yes. what? Over here at the Community Collective, we're not afraid to put in the hard work. <laughs> That's right. We you know not only do we want to talk about fun things, but we ask the tough questions. <laughs> That's right. Asking the tough That's questions. Right. Again, Travis, you're a master of transitions. That kind of leads me into my next question. Uh, that's a little bit on the flip side of that. So looking back, is there an episode you wish you would approach differently to better serve the community? Yeah. Thinking about it, I've always been really happy with how the episodes have gone. And I know there's always probably questions that I wish I had thought of to ask later on. And it's one of those ones where my mm -hmm. mind starts thinking afterwards. But one thing that I wish I had thought about, and maybe this is a goal for 2024, is that our podcast gets together and just, you know, you and I talk about some community updates. From the perspective of the chamber, this is how we see what's going on in the community. Um, I kind of, you know, I wish we had thought about, oh, what way can we just kind of talk about what's going on in the community outside of interviewing a business owner or Someone's engaged sure. into it and just our perspective of it. I think that's something that I, I think we should look at for 2024. And, and it's just a way maybe that uh, we invite some people on and we say, hey, what do you think about, you know, what's going on in the community right now? What, what do you enjoy? And just a conversation style about everything in our area. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. 
and it almost allows us with one of the things we want to do with expanding the podcast and being able to interview multiple people at the same time, being able to do almost like a community roundtable once a month, something yes. like that would be great where three or four of us get together. We have an opportunity to sit down and converse about developments happening in the area or things we would like to see or problems that we could potentially solve. So that's a great suggestion, Travis. I like that a lot. Yeah. And they know if you listen to podcasts. Um, I'm listening to some, and they could be on a variety of things, everything from Disney, uh, something at our church to this podcast, to just random um, ones I find that seem interesting about something that's going on in our area. Mm -hmm. And I do, I always like it when there's a good conversation going and with lots of people. And I think that's beneficial. Yeah. It might be a lot of chatter, um, but I think people like to listen to it. And it sometimes it's pretty entertaining just to hear those different perspectives. Yeah, absolutely. And we're all melting pot. Nobody's ever going to agree with somebody else a hundred percent. But I think going back to talking about the transportation issues or when Lake Callis was closing, potentially all those different things that we discussed and we covered in season two, well, season one and season two, so much of it hinges on the fact that as a community, we need to be able to have civil discourse. We need to be able to have conversations without yelling and screaming at each other. We need to be able to hear other people's opinions. It doesn't mean we have to agree with them, but we need to be able to listen, discuss, understand, empathize, all of those different things. And I think that's my hope is that when we have guests join us on the podcast, we're not really picking and choosing to say, oh, we agree with you on this, or you're someone that's controversial. Let's come on. No, we just want to have people come on and just have a conversation with them and just see where it goes from there. And it's mostly, yeah, like you said, we're trying to just engage the community. Oh, we're just trying to show them that the Davidson Chamber offers a lot of different avenues of just being part of something really good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So now moving forward, we've had almost 40 some odd different interviews and discussions with people from throughout the area. You talked about it initially. Yes, it is a collaborative effort um, with the Davidson Area Chamber of Commerce, but we are talking to members over in Lapeer County, over in Flint, yes. different organizations, different groups. So how have the conversations you've had with local figures changed your perspective on our community? Man, they, you know, I will say I'm always fascinated because since the first questions we always ask um, are kind of tell us a little bit about your background and kind of lead into what are, like, what do you really enjoy? about your community or our community that you're living in since we are interviewing people in other places and i to me that gives me a perspective of oh i never thought of something like that whether it's talking to the grand blank chamber or the flint genesee chamber you know, we're all interacting we're all seeing things but when they say oh we tried this or this is what my passion is oh i completely agree with you or i never i will say their perspective can really get me thinking about oh could I try this with in the Davidson community as our sure. team works towards a lot of stuff? And then you get some of the elected officials that we've had uh, come on and you hear what their passion is about interacting with presidents. And <laughs> sometimes I always like asking, what's an interesting story you can share about your business or during your time that you've been in office? And I think that really uh, is something that I listen to. I'm like, okay. I get why that person reached out to you, or you talk about reaching out to your office. I think like the elected officials in Lansing that we've had on, and they're sharing, hey, give us a call. You know, we're there to help you during a, a situation where you don't know what's going on with your driver's license or Medicaid, or you just um, question about your tax return. The fact that they're saying, hey, give me a call. I'm here to serve you. Right. I think that really is exciting to know that's a resource for people. But then you talk about these businesses. There's so many of them that when we've had them on and you're talking to them, and there's a lot of times I don't know a lot about them. You know, I've talked to them maybe at our lunches, and then you hear about a program that they've been working on, and it's amazing. Yeah. You know, I think of Fern, Fern Co. And not only is their investment in our community, but when you sit there and you talk to them, and we haven't had Fern Co. on yet. My goal is to get them to come on this next year, but you see what their passion is to make sure that their employees are happy, that they're taking care of their families. And I think to me, that shows you that we're in an area 
that businesses or elected officials or anybody just wants to be part of what's going on and making sure Davidson is a place that you want to live, work, and raise a family. So I think one of the very first interviews we had was with Alicia Hensley when she yes. was just just appointed to her school board position. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, with having four young kids and you have young kids as well, I like to, I guess, take the temperature of what's happening with our school board and the direction things are going. Obviously, there's been a massive community investment uh, with the recent millage here in Davison. And now with, with our previous superintendent, Kevin Brown, having left and Matt Loban being in place, it's nice to get a feel for where they anticipate the direction of our schools is going. Our schools have been a draw for many a year you know, with people saying, oh my gosh, trying to get into Davison is, is such a challenge because <laughs> everybody wants to be in Davison. That, and that's fantastic. You know, but as a community, we always want to make sure that we're pointed in the right direction you know, when doing things that are going to be advantageous, not only for our community, but for our kids. Because our kids are really the lifeblood of our future. And we need to make sure that we're doing what's best for all of them as well. Right. And, then, and that's what, you know, a lot of times I tell people, they're like, so what do you, what are your, what's your mission or your personal goals with the chamber? And I tell them, I was like, well, I was like, this is a great opportunity for me to not only get to know people in my community, but to be part of something to help hopefully develop a mindset in my kids that there's a lot going on here. And someday when they decide to go away to college, my hope is that we've created a community where they say, I want to go back there. I, you know, there's work opportunities. There's a place that I want to raise my family someday. Not that I want to rush my kids growing up, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I, I agree between the schools and businesses and just meeting residents at our events that we're having throughout the community that you see, this is going to be a great place. We're going to be the, you know, the Davidson Chamber wants to be part of what's going on here and play a role in getting our kids to come back here and being the future of our area. And I think that is ultimately what you want for your family. You want them to be happy when yep. they grow up, but I also want them to somewhat stay close to where we are. Sure, sure. And let me pose almost a little bit of a counterpoint as well in doing that and showcasing our personal love for the community that we're engaged in. I want whether it be my kids or my fellow citizens in the community themselves, if you do move away from Davison or your travels take you elsewhere, or work takes you elsewhere, I want you to take that passion that we have for the community. And I want you to spread that passion in your own community. Well, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we have an upcoming interview, or actually by the time this releases, Lee LaForest has a great saying about the Chamber of Commerce and the community and things like that, in so much that the Chamber of Commerce is like a gym membership. If you don't ever use it, guess what? You're still going to be out of shape. You're not getting any healthier. All you're doing is paying a bill. Much like a gym membership, if you go out there and you utilize it, you engage with it, and you take advantage of the things that are available, it's so fantastic. And it holds so many benefits for th those of us that are utilizing it the way we feel is optimal, you know, that you can't really go wrong. It's always to say, oh, it's just another bell. It's just this. It's a sticker on the door. But what we're trying to yeah. do is we're trying to convey that there is a tremendous amount of value if you're willing to engage with us and enjoy getting to know the other business owners, the other employees, the venues, the location. There's just so many great things happening in our area, and they can happen in so many other areas. And I hope that enthusiasm will spread throughout the area. And I completely agree. And I love that Lee says that, and it's true. And I think with our group, we've really tried to focus hard this year on being in a role in a community and showing how active and engaged we are. But we also want people to be part of that. We want to say, hey, we're going to take time to get to know you. We're going to get time to know your business. Come share with us. And, and that's mm -hmm. what my hope is, is that our membership, it really has grown. And I think that's a testament to the Davison Chamber becoming something in our community that people will say, oh, I've seen them there. I've seen, you know, I've interacted with them. Or, mm -hmm. um, And I also want people to feel welcome. You know, that's what I yeah, always of course. share. Yep. It, share yep. is come to one of our lunches, come to one of our events, just be part of it. 
Oh, and we hope that's for you and ask us questions. We would love to talk to you. Oh, for sure. No, absolutely. Absolutely. We can meet you on your level, but we hope you'll meet us on ours, which is those monthly community connection lunches that we have. So many after hours events and other great events coming up. All right. We've talked about a ton of stuff, but the last question I have for this recap episode is what are some of the dream interviews or community topics you're hoping to cover in season three and season four throughout the year 2024? Well, I sit there and I look at our, our total number of members we have. And I think, okay, how can we fit all of these businesses in a year of talking to them? And I'm like, okay, sure, we're going to get there. I think one of the things that I really hope for, for 2024 is that we're going to be ahead of the game and we're going to talk to any organization that's going to be hosting an event and get mm -hmm. them on a couple of weeks before and get them talking about it. And then we can play a role in helping promote what they are doing. Um, you know, it could be everything from a fundraiser that an organization is hosting to just a, a community event that people can attend and enjoy something. I think that's what one area I would really want to do is just be part of what's going on in the events and promoting to people. That way, we're just in an avenue that someone can find out what's going on in the area. Um, I think I would like to get, we talked about a roundtable conversation going. Um, find some topics that we can just get a, a group of people together to discuss on this podcast. And it could mm -hmm. just be, hey, did you see that's going on in downtown Davidson? You know, do sure. you know what's going on? And I, you know, I think those not, might not be like tough questions, but it's just good conversation. Yeah. Um, and not only does it help me feel I know what's going on and I can tell my family about it, but we want other people to do that too. Um, so other topics, man, that's, Johnny, this is a tough question. Because sometimes like, oh, I, I told I, you, I had my Barbara Walters sweater on, man. I was ready yeah. to bring you the toughies. Uh, now, now you really get the cameras on me and the sweat's forming from the pressure <laughs> of this one. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, I feel we can really grow this podcast and the influence that Davison has um, in the area by bringing on guests that are maybe not from or find someone from another county that can share, hey, this is what we have going on. And I think that just shows that we want to know what opportunities are out there to learn about other things and maybe our community learns from it and says, Oh, we should try that. So I think really kind of reaching out outside of our bubble, um, as I think we could do just to bring in more people into this conversation and as become part of our community. I love it. I love it. What a great goal for 2024. I have, I actually have a top five list of people I'm working on for 2024 for myself to bring on the pod as well with Travis. Uh, but I will not reveal them because I'm working with agents and trying to coordinate things and see if somebody wants to be on this quote unquote rinky dink little community podcast. <laughs> but I tell you what, we sure as heck have a lot of fun with it. And if anything, we're passionate about it. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't enjoy it. We're not paid. We're not sponsored. Travis and I take time out of our schedule to do this because we are passionate about it and we do want to bring value and information to the community at large. I think that's one thing that I would like to see more of if I did have a magical wish list. Up pretty high on that list would be wanting the community to engage with us. Tell us who you want. Who do you want to hear from? Who do you want us to bring on the pod? Are there specific topics uh, that you'd like us to discuss? We'd love to do it. But and we're only two random guys just hanging out, podcast for the fun of it. If there's really a hard hitting issue or something that needs to be discussed, we're not afraid to tackle that if we can. So don't be afraid to reach out to us and let us know what you want to talk about and who you want to hear from. Right. And I think the cool thing is that we want everyone to feel, yeah, like you said, reach out to us. We'd love to have you on as a guest. Um, we'll talk to you beforehand, kind of get an idea of what you want to cover. But we really have, this podcast has grown from something just fun to do. To now we're streaming on what Apple podcast, Everywhere. Google podcast, Everywhere. And Spotify. Buddy, and with, um, <laughs> with my, with my nerdiness, I put us on every podcasting platform from here to Christmas. So we are syndicated to the interwebs. I had uh, just checked earlier before we hopped on this pod and we have people that have downloaded episodes in Germany, uh, people that have downloaded episodes in England uh, that are listening as well. 
We've got obviously locals of the area. We've had hundreds of downloads of people listening locally, which is fantastic. And for a podcast that just recently got syndicated, I am extremely happy with the support we've received from the community. And I'm definitely looking forward to blowing the doors off 2024. It's going to be a blast. Oh man, I'm really excited just to see, because I know I just like you, I had my list going of people I want to talk to or businesses. And I feel like it's growing every day. I'm sitting there, like, oh, I really want to talk to this person or oh, this could be a good topic. Uh, and I think that's what 2024 is going to be about, getting more people engaged, yep. having more conversations. And I think ultimately it, just keep having fun. That's what I oh, for sure. want people to do. I want people to say, I've never been on a podcast, but man, that was fun. Can you have me on again in a couple of months? <laughs> and I right away say, yes, you, we'll work it out and we'll get you back on. We'll talk some more. So. I love it. I absolutely love it. Travis, this was an amazing recap episode. Just being able to reflect on where we started and where we are currently. You know, we've got so many great things planned. We're actually going to be, we'll have already met by the time this episode's released, but we're planning our 2024 episodes, changing things up a little bit, but continuing to do the things that are working well for us and how we can continue to bring you guys the information that you deserve. The, the forthcoming aspects of what's happening with our community leaders, whether it be the city, Richfield Township, Davison Township, City of Davison. We want to keep engaging on your level and letting you guys know what's happening in the areas. Travis, as always, my friend, it was so great to actually catch up with you on an episode instead of me having to do intros and outros as our schedules have finally aligned. So it was great to chat with you today and I'm looking forward to what a hell of a fun 2024. Oh man, I, I am excited. I cannot wait. And Johnny, it is always a pleasure to just sit here, have fun with you, make some jokes, and just really start planning um, for the growth of this. And good. I'm always happy to have you join me. And it's a good partnership. And man, can't wait to see what 2024 holds. We're going to have some fun. That's for sure. Travis, thank you so much, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. 